Okay, it's time to be a little more positive for this video. We did the worst thing about every single Call of Duty Zombies mode. Now we're going to do the best thing about every Call of Duty Zombies mode. I've already done this for the multiplayers as well, so go check out those videos. I uploaded them probably about a month or two ago from now. But let's get into this. Starting with World of War, this one's pretty easy. I would just say the fact that it started at all is the best thing about it. You know, without this, we wouldn't have gotten the plenty full of modes to come later on. Obviously, there's not much to say about World of War because of how simplistic and bare bones it is. But again, without it, we wouldn't have gotten all the wonderful modes that came afterwards. And of course, I'm very nostalgic for this game when I played it back when it was first out. But obviously, nowadays, it just doesn't hold up to the other ones. Black Ops 1, I'm actually going to go with the storyline. So this is when I actually started to really get into the zombie storyline. Obviously, it was there in World of War, but Black Ops 1 is when they really started pushing it. And honestly, I almost cared more about the storyline in Black Ops 1 than I did about actually playing. Like, of course, I had a great time going for high rounds with my friends and stuff, but after I was done, I would always go on YouTube and start researching, like, different videos and theories about the story because there was a lot of interesting things there, and learning about the story in Black Ops 1 was really interesting. I haven't really been that into the story in any other Zombies mode. I tend to prefer the gameplay elements, but Black Ops 1 was the one case where there wasn't too much to the gameplay. Obviously, the Easter eggs weren't that in-depth. There weren't any crazy boss fights. There was no, like, leveling up systems. So there wasn't much to do beyond just going for high rounds. So I just, you know, naturally got more into the story, and I think that was one of the best parts of Black Ops 1. So for Black Ops 2, obviously, Mob of the Dead, Buried, and Origins are fantastic maps. But I'm actually going to say for this one, the inclusion of difficulty settings grief mode and survival maps was the best thing they could have done for this game because of although i love playing mob of the dead buried and origins and i would say those maps are you know the best part about this game in terms of like the maps but having that diversity in what you can do you can play those maps but then if you get bored of them after a while you can go over to town farm bus depot nuketown and in all these modes you can change the difficulty levels you can change this the round you start on and you could play grief mode on some of them, you could play turned on the diner mode. It was just a lot of nice little things you can do in this game beyond just playing the main maps in the game, which to me the main maps were obviously Mob, Buried, and Origins, which because obviously those were the best ones with all the crazy Easter egg stuff. Those are the best things about the game, but just having that variety there was incredible. That's one of my favorite things about Black Ops 2. There ain't a lot of good things I can say about Advanced Warfare's Exo Zombies, but the one thing I can say is that there were a lot of unique wonder weapons, power-ups, and equipment in this game. Like, very unique. Stuff we have never seen in any other Zombies mode before. For starters, for the wonder weapons, the Cell 3 Carterizer, I mean, was pretty cool in its own right, but the LZ Limbo wonder weapon on Carrier was insanely cool. It wasn't that great, but it was insanely cool and unique the way it worked. And then, of course, you had the Trident on Descent, that was a really unique wonder weapon. All the unique ideas, they weren't just copy and pasting ideas we've seen before. This was something completely new. The Magnetron was obviously a copy and paste of the Paralyzer, but in terms of the other wonder weapons, very, very different. Well, not copy and paste, you know what I mean? It was a very similar idea, a very similar concept. But then you had some really cool power-ups as well, like the Lockdown one. You had the one that had all those stars flying around you when you run the zombies, it insta-kills them. You had cool power up or not equipment like the teleport grenades, which I thought were some of the coolest things ever. Like a lot of cool things in this game that were really unique. So I got to give it some credit there. For Black Ops 3, I'm going to have to say the main quests and the boss fights. Amazing stuff. I mean, that is what I play Black Ops 3 for. That is the best thing about it for sure is just grinding out those Easter eggs and those getting to those boss fights and just the intensity and it is how cinematic some of those boss fights can be, especially Dreisendrock and Garot Krovi, Shadows of Evil as well. But, you know, even Zetsubo and Revelations I could still have a lot of fun with. Obviously, they're a lot easier with Gobblegums, but I think they're even just, just fine without Gobblegums. Except for Re Revelations, that's the only one where without Gobblegums it kind of sucks. But with Gobblegums, I don't think it's too bad. I have a blast playing these easter eggs man they're, they're just everyone always says zombies chronicles is what makes black ops 3 the best and i, I don't i can't agree with that at all it is a hundred percent the main maps on the game with these crazy in-depth easter eggs and boss fights and there's a lot to these maps too like that is what gave this game so much replayability for me 100 percent. of course custom zombies on pc is amazing but i'm not talking about that because not everyone has PC, so it wouldn't be fair to talk about that, but obviously Custom Zombies is awesome too. For Infinite Warfare Zombies, I'm gonna say the fact that there are so many things to do, that's gotta be the best thing about it. I would say Infinite Warfare Zombies might be the most content-heavy Zombies mode ever when you're talking about the stuff on the individual maps themselves, and even outside of the maps, when you look at like the weapon variants, 
it's the only zombies game that has like an in-depth weapon variant system. Obviously, you had some weapon variant idea and concepts in World War II, but it wasn't too in-depth. But Infinite Warfare, obviously, you had the weapon variants also in multiplayer, and you can craft them with salvage that you earn in-game. And you had so many that were also usable in zombies, and they did unique things in zombies. So that was already really awesome. Of course, you had the Fate and Fortune cards, which is just another gobblegum system, but a little bit different, not as overpowered. And I thought it was definitely implemented well. But then just on the maps themselves, I mean, Zombies in Spaceland especially is probably the most content-heavy zombies map of all time. Raven the Redwoods has a ton of stuff too, Shallon Shuffle as well. They start getting less and less content heavy as the maps go on. Of course, Beasts or Beyond doesn't really have too much to do, unfortunately, but especially those first few maps, it's insane. I mean, you have a main Easter egg quest, and usually they're very good. At least I would say the, the first two maps, definitely, they're very good Easter egg quests. And then you have the Ghosts and Skulls quest, which is almost like a secondary Easter egg quest, like a harder Easter egg quest. And I absolutely love that concept. And then in terms of side quests, every map in Infinite Warfare has like 10 plus side quests that are pretty long and in-depth and actually give you decent rewards and that's another thing i mean the rewards in this game are amazing with director's cut and all the individual rewards you get for doing the easter eggs how you can get the different character skins from the celebrities to use after you beat the easter egg like stuff like that is just so amazing there's so many things to work for so many things to do that gives this game so much life and it's why it's easily the most replayable zombies mode for me even though there's only five maps compared to some of the other games that have way more maps but they don't hold a cake to how in-depth Infinite Warfare Zombies can be. For World War II Zombies, I'm going to say the boss designs, they're really well designed. Like, the art team knocked it out of the park. And I don't mean the gameplay of the bosses. I mean, I don't think they're terrible. I don't love them. But the designs for them, like the artwork. And even the artwork on just, like, the war weapons and the maps, like... There are some incredible looking stuff in World War II, and I mean, it's really hard to tell in the game itself, but when you especially look at, like, renders, especially made by J.R. Rizzo, it's just, like, insane how good some of these bosses look in this game. They are just, wow. wow. Really creepy stuff, really cool looking stuff, though. I, I, I really think that Sledgehammer deserves another shot at zombies, because Vanguard Zombies isn't theirs. And obviously Advanced Warfare Zombies wasn't even theirs, so this is really the only time they've made it. And clearly their art team has something good going on there because they made some really cool looking things. I just think the gameplay elements of World War II wasn't up to par with some of the other modes, unfortunately. For Black Ops 4, I really struggled with this one because there's a lot to Black Ops 4. Almost like Infinite Warfare, I think this is one of the most replayable Zombies modes. It, you know, I know a lot of people don't like a lot of the mechanics and stuff, but you can't lie that there's a ton of content in Black Ops 4. There's a lot of things to do in this game. So that is huge. But the one thing that I honestly think about the most from this game, and I, I think I, I really just absolutely love, is the soundtrack. Like, the soundtrack, of course, Jack Wall, Brian Tui, those are the main guys that come to mind. Obviously, Kevin Sherwood's Easter Egg songs are great as well, but even just the original score, like, not even just the, the, the Easter Egg songs themselves, there's a, a lot of incredible music in Black Ops 4 Zombies. There's a lot of incredible music in every Zombies mode, but this one especially, especially on Blood of the Dead, Voyage of Despair, Ancient Evil, Dead of the Night, Nine, actually, like, every map, Tag of the Toe, and even every, Alpha, Omega, yeah, every map has amazing music, I, I can't even think of one map in this game that doesn't have incredible music throughout the entirety of it, when I did my top 10 best uh, zombie map soundtracks, I think a lot of it was Black Ops 4, because it's just, that's just what it is, man, this game has some incredible music, and these egg songs, like I said, are honestly, I think, some of Kevin Sherwood's best work, at least a couple of them, so that's something, and yeah, that, that's one of the things I think about the most from this game. Like, this game is very nostalgic for me. I know it only came out three years ago, but it's very nostalgic when I listen to that music from that game. It just reminds me of that time so much because the music is just so unique and heavily presented on these maps. It's like constantly playing as you're playing the maps. I love the boss fights in Black Ops 4 as well. I think they have a lot of really cool boss fights and even some of the Easter eggs. And the music kind of works into those boss fights in a very brilliant way. I mean, there's very unique music played throughout each of the boss fights. And when I hear that music, of course, the first thing I think of is that boss fight and the feeling I had when I first played that boss fight. For Cold War Zombies, I'm going to say the weapon rarity system. I really like this because it allowed them to find a way to make pretty much every gun useful. Unfortunately, it still didn't do exactly what it should have done because... Yeah, they were trying to make the guns, like, all balanced, just based on what rarity they are, but I feel like people still use shotguns, and, like, that's it regardless. 
but I at least found myself trying at least to use other weapons more often, and I really do like that concept. I really do like how every any weapon can become pretty decent. You know, it's not like previous games where there's very clear best guns in the game and there's no reason to use anything else in this one. It was kind of like, yeah, you know, there's obviously the best guns in the game are like the Gallo and the, and the Hauer and stuff, but... Or the, was it the Mauler? No, it was the Hauer. The Mauler was in Infinite Warfare. Yeah, it's the Hauer. But you know what I mean. Most of the guns in the game were still pretty viable, and I really like that about Cold War Zombies. So uh, that's the one thing that I think I'm always going to think of when I think of Cold War Zombies. And for Vanguard Zombies... Nothing. Uh, not, not a single thing is good about this game. Not a single thing is deserving of giving any credit for this game. Not a single thing!